Hey there class, hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Welcome back to another virtual lesson here for pre-algebra. Today we are going to be jumping into section 2.5, which is all about the order of operations. So the first thing we're going to talk about is simplifying expressions. So when we're being asked to simplify an expression, it's exactly what it sounds like. We're making it simpler, meaning less numbers, less symbols, less operations. So to do that, we perform all operations in the correct order until they are all completed. So operations such as addition or division or maybe distributing into parentheses. These are all things we're going to learn about. Now, the good news is we've already done a sneak peek of this in our previous chapter, and we've learned what our order of operations are, but let's review together. So when we are doing following the order of operations, first, we start by performing all operations within any parentheses, brackets, or other grouping symbols, such as fraction bars. And there's one more I want you to think about. Do, have we learned about any other grouping symbols? We have. Absolute value. That would count as a grouping symbol. So that's always going to be step number one in our order of operations. After you've eliminated all parentheses, brackets, fraction bars, absolute values, etc., then you move on to exponents. So step number two, you evaluate any exponents. After that, we are going to multiply or divide. And remember, when we do that, this one is in order from left to right. So it doesn't matter if it's multiplication or division first, as long as you're going in order from left to right across the problem. And the last step is to add or subtract. And again, that is in order from left to right, the same direction you read a sentence. So let's practice some of these, starting with number one. Now, if you feel like this is making sense and you're ready to challenge yourself, I encourage you to pause the video and try these first before doing them with me. If you're feeling unsure or a little uneasy, that's fine. Do it with me. So either way, we should all have pencils in hand ready to work on number one. Number one is negative three times six squared. So I have multiplication, a negative, but that's not an operation and exponents. So PEMDAS tells me, well, I don't have any parentheses, so I'm going to start with my exponents. Now we've learned six squared is really six times six. So that would be 36. Please do not do six times two and tell me that the answer is 12. That's a very common mistake we do not want to make. So six squared is 36. Then we still have the three which is negative, so times negative three. Now, next up, we have no other operations to do. We just have a negative three times a 36. So the only operation that's left is multiplication. So that's what we're gonna do. Three times six is 18. Three times three is nine plus one is 10. So our answer would be negative 108. When you are simplifying, or working with order of operations of any sort. It is so crucial that you show all steps. It might feel silly. It might feel like, well, it's a no-brainer. Obviously, I subtracted, or obviously, I multiply next. But in math, you have to prove your answers, kind of like a lawyer who needs to present evidence to win a case. We can't just be right. We have to prove why we're right. So that's why we show all of our steps. Now, moving on to number um, four. We're going to bounce back and forth here. So we're kind of going to ignore the numbers. So moving over to the next one. We have 30 plus 50 plus negative 4 cubed. Well, I don't have, I do have parentheses, but those parentheses are just separating my negative 4. So it's clear that I'm going to be 
multiplying negative 4 by itself three times. So this is really going to be negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4. Well, negative 4 times negative 4 is 16 times negative 4. We get negative 64. Okay, now that's just the negative 4 cubed. That was all for the first step, evaluating your exponent. Now we have to bring everything else down. 30 and the 50. Now from here we have addition and a negative left so we go from left to right. So 30 plus 50 80 plus negative 64. Now we just finished learning all of our negatives so we know if we're adding negative 64 we're adding a positive plus a negative so we're really going to do 80 minus 64 and subtract And then we're going to make the answer positive because the bigger absolute value was positive. So your answer would be 16. Now, number 2, negative 25 over 5 times negative 1. Well, remember, first of all, this fraction bar, it counts as one of our grouping symbols as our first step, our P in PEMDAS. So we're going to do that first because that fraction bar is really telling us to divide. Now, I can't divide though until I have two numbers. So I have to simplify both sides of the fraction before I can do any division. Negative 25 is already pretty simplified. We can't do anything there. There's no operations to do. But here we have 5 times negative 1. So we're going to do that first. We get negative 5. And now we have no more parentheses, no more operations to do. So now we divide negative 25 divided by negative 5, positive 5. All right. Next up, we have negative 2 plus negative 4 squared plus 1 to the fifth. So first I do my parentheses. These parentheses don't have an operation in them. It's They're just separating the negative from the plus sign so that we don't get confused. So instead I'm going to do exponents first. So first I have negative 2 cubed. Well, negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4 times negative 2 again is negative 8 plus negative 4 squared. Now remember, if we have negative 4 squared, we're multiplying with the negative. So we get positive 16. So this would be negative 8 plus 16 and then 1 to the fifth. Well, 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 is still going to be 1. So it's just plus 1. Now we go from left to right, because the only operations left are addition. So negative 8 plus 16 is 8, plus 1 is 9. So our answer would be 9. Now, number 3. Here we have another fraction, but before we can do any of the division, we simplify both the top and the bottom first. So I'm going to do negative 19 plus 6. Well, negative 19 plus 6 is the same as 19 minus 6. And that would be 13 negative over negative 3 minus 1, negative 4. Now, negative 13 over negative 4, we can't really do that. It, it doesn't divide evenly. So instead of trying to figure out a decimal, I'm just going to leave this as 13 over 4. Now, it's positive because it was negative over negative. That can be simplified. So I simplified it. Always simplify whatever you can. 
next and last on this page. So we have parentheses. Now this time we have an operation actually happening inside the parentheses. So that is going to happen first. Now don't get rid of the two on the outside of the parentheses. That needs to stay there. Then we do 2 minus 9, that's negative 7, plus negative 12, minus 3. Next up, I have addition, subtraction, and multiplication right here. 2 times negative 7. So I'm going to get negative 14 plus negative 12 minus 3. Negative 14 plus negative 12 is negative 26 minus 3. Now there, it's a negative plus a negative, or we're subtracting. So we do 26 plus 3 is 29, keep the negative. So we get negative 29. All right, now on your paper, go ahead and turn to the next page. Now for number 7, we have negative 5 times the absolute value of negative 8 plus negative 3 plus 2 cubed. So we're going to need PEMDAS to help us with this because I see a lot of different operations. Multiplication, absolute value, addition, and negatives, and of course exponents. So first I start with parentheses. Now inside the parentheses there's no operations to do, but I do have absolute value, and that counts as part of the parentheses. So I'm going to take this negative 8, and because it's in absolute value, it becomes a positive 8. Once it turns positive, that absolute value has been used up. It's, it's gone. It it's disappears. So it's just positive 8. And I bring down the negative 5 plus negative 3 plus 2 cubed. All right, so we've done the parentheses, which counts as the absolute value. Now we ask ourselves, what's next? E for exponents, and we do have exponents, 2 cubed, so that's going to become 8. Bring down everything else. Now, we've gotten rid of the exponents. Next up is the multiply and divide step. We go from left to right, and the first thing I see is multiply. So negative 5 times 8 is negative 40 plus negative 3 plus 8. So we get negative 43 plus 8. So our final answer, negative 35. All right, last one. I challenge you to pause the video, try it on your own first. And then let's do it together. So here I see I have brackets and parentheses when I take a look at this problem. Now the eight, don't let it confuse you. That's just the question number. So it's negative four times negative six plus five times negative three plus five minus seven. So I'm gonna start with parentheses now I have brackets, and inside the brackets, I have parentheses. So this is going to be what we start with, negative 3 plus 5, because that was the bracket, the parentheses inside the brackets. So negative 3 plus 5 is 2. Bring down the 5, 6, the negative sign, minus 7, and negative 4. Now, that part I just did might seem easy, but that's where most mistakes happen because students get rushed and re copy it down recklessly and miss a piece. So carefully copy it down, then check that everything matches, then continue. Now we still have brackets, so we're going to solve what's inside the brackets. And inside the brackets, we have addition and multiplication. Well, PEMDAS... 
tells me to do multiplication before addition. So I'm going to do 5 times 2 is 10 plus negative 6. Now this is a mistake that happens so much. I see so many students do negative 6 plus 5 and then multiply it by 2. Don't do that. You've got to multiply first. So 5 times 2 is 10. Then we add it to negative 6. Bring down the negative 4. Bring down the minus 7. Now we still have brackets. So we're technically, we're still up at the parentheses step. So we're going to solve what's inside the brackets. Negative 6 plus 10 is positive 4. Then we have the negative 4 on the outside and the minus 7. Now this negative 4, you might be thinking, well, what's happening there? There's no symbol. Remember, it's just like parentheses. So that means negative 4 times 4, which is negative 16 minus 7. And your final answer, negative 23. Okay, now, I want you to ask yourself, true or false? The result of negative 4 times 3 minus 7 minus 8 times 9 minus 6 is positive because there are four negative signs. Hmm. Well, honestly, I'm going to have to follow the steps to see. So I know I have parentheses. I'm going to do that first. So this will become negative 4 times 3 minus 7 is negative 4 minus 8. 9 minus 6 is 3. Now, the four negative signs, that really doesn't make a difference because if the 7 was first, then we would end up with a, ne a negative there still, but it would be a negative 3, and it would give us a positive answer because we would be doing 7 minus 3. So it doesn't just depend on how many negative signs, but where are the negative signs? So if we keep this going, this would be positive 16 minus... 8 times 3 is 24. So that gives us negative 8. So the answer would actually be negative. So this is a false statement. It's nothing to do with how many signs there are. It's all about how and when we use the signs. Now, evaluating expressions. So this is when we have a variable. So evaluating expressions are, we do blank the given values for each blank, then simplify according to the blank. So we are going to evaluate by substituting or replacing the given values for each variable then simplify according to the order of operations. So the simplifying is what we just finished practicing. So that's the same. The only difference now is we're going to be substituting numbers in first before we simplify. So number one, 6z squared over x. x is 3, y is negative 5, z is a negative 4. So 6 times z negative 4 squared over 3. Now we have parentheses but again that's not there's no operation inside the parentheses they're just separating the negative 4 from the 6. So that's really showing me multiplication. So my first step in PEMDAS will be exponents. So that's the two. Now it's z squared and z is negative four. So it's negative four squared. Negative four times negative four is positive 16. Oops. So I just replace, I substitute that in for negative four squared. Now I'm gonna do my math. 16 times six 6 times 6 is 36, 1 times 6, 6, 7, 8, 9. So this gives us 96, 6 times 16 became 96, 
over 3. Now remember that, th that over 3, that's division. So this is really 96 divided by 3. So 3 goes into 9 3 times, 3 goes into 6 2 times. So our answer is 32. Next, number 3, we have y minus x squared plus yz. Now please remember, guys, this is something I saw come up on the quizzes. yz does not mean I'm just putting the numbers next to each other. It's that y number times the z number. It's multiplication. So I'm going to rewrite this with my values. y is negative 5 minus x is 3 squared plus y negative 5 times z negative 4. So we just replaced all of these variables with these values. Now we simplify. So left to right, first thing I see is exponents. So I'm going to do negative 5 minus 9 plus negative 5 times negative 4. Now my next operations, I have subtraction, addition, and then these two are being multiplied. Yes, there's no sign, but we know when there's no operation sign, that means multiply. So I'm going to do this multiplication next. So negative 5 times negative 4 is positive 20 plus negative 9 minus 5. All right, now we have subtraction and addition, so this is where we go from left to right. So negative 5 minus 9, negative 14 plus positive 20. Now negative 14 plus positive 20, our answer is positive 6. All right, number 2. So x is 3, y is negative 5, and z is negative 4. Now here's an example of why the parentheses help, so I don't mistake, mistakenly combine these and think there's only one symbol. It's minus negative. Now we simplify. First thing I see is multiplication. So 3 plus 2 times negative 5 is negative 10 minus negative 4. Next, I'm going to add or subtract, but I'm going to no decide which one first by going from left to right. So 3 plus negative 10 is negative 7 minus negative 4. Now here, remember when we have a negative next to a, a minus, they cancel out. So this becomes negative 7 plus 4 which is negative 3. All right, and our last one of this section, again, x is 3, y is negative 5, z is 4. So I'm going to plug that in. So this becomes negative 10. The z is negative 4, so I'm going to replace that with negative 4 over y, which is negative 5 plus x, y, z. So I am not going to write just 3, 5, 4. It's not 354. It needs to be 3 times negative 5 times negative 4. Now that we've written that down, we ask ourselves, what happens first? Well, first I'm going to look at my grouping symbols, which fraction bars count as here. And I'm going to do the group two groups. So negative 10 times negative 4 is 40 over negative 5 plus 3 times negative 5 times negative 4. Now 40 over negative 5, that's division, and that is going to be negative 8 plus 3 times negative 5 times negative 4. Yes, I don't have parentheses here. I do here. It doesn't matter because it's just multiplication. Now, next up, I could do negative 8 plus 3, 
but that is not PEMDAS. PEMDAS means I need to multiply all of these first. So I'm going to do negative 8 plus 3 times negative 5 is negative 15 times negative 4. So that gives me negative 8 plus positive 60. Well, negative 8 plus 60 is the same as 60 minus 8, which is 52. All right, we're doing great. Proud of you guys. So the last thing we're going to do is called finding averages. Finding averages is also called the mean. So to find the average, we've talked about this already as well this year. The average is the sum of the numbers divided by the number of numbers. So if they've given us negative numbers and positive numbers, it makes it a little trickier. So we use what the skills we've been practicing. So if I have negative 18 minus 8, I'm just going to start there. Negative 18 minus 8. Negative 26 minus 1. Oops. No, 1, 0, and 4. So now I'm going to add the next two. Negative 26 plus negative 1. So that gives me negative 27. Negative 1, 0, and 4. Negative 27 plus negative 1 is negative 28, 0, and 4. Now negative 28 plus 4 is negative 24. So that is my sum of numbers. But remember, our average is the sum of the numbers divided by the number of numbers. Now ask yourself, how many numbers are there here? Well, one, two, three, four, five, six. You might be thinking, but wait, zero, zero is weird. Does it count? Does it not? What's the deal? Yes, zero does count as a number. It is part of this list, part of the set. So we do negative 24 divided by six and the average is negative four. All right, last section, the graph below shows the average temperature in Barrow, Alaska across several months. What is the average temperature in November and December? All right, so November, the average temperature is negative one degrees. In December, the average temperature is negative 11 degrees. So to find the average, we're going to add the sum of our numbers. So that's negative 1 plus negative 11 over the number of numbers, which is 2. November and December, just those two. So that becomes negative 12 over 2. So the average is negative 6 degrees. All right, and the last one. What is the average temperature for January through April? Now here it just said November and December. So that's why it was just those two months. But January through April means we're going to be including January, February, March, and April. Key words matter. So if I look at my chart, January, negative 13, February, negative 16, 
March, negative 13, and April, 2. So those are our temperatures. So now we add them all together. I'm going to start with negative 13 plus negative 16. That gives me negative 29. Minus 13. Negative 42 plus 2 is negative 40. So that's my sum of the numbers. So remember our average is the sum of the numbers over the number of numbers. So negative 40 over one, two, three, four months. So the average temperature over those four months, negative 40 divided by four, negative 10 degrees. All right, so that was our last example from this section. So please notice you have homework. It will be posted on Veracross or is both posted on Veracross. In the textbook, it is pages 139 to 141. Answer all of them. Now, if you are interested in earning bonus points, I want you to email your most creative Halloween costume idea for Mrs. Goldberg. All right, so to get bonus points, I want you to email me your most creative Halloween costume idea for me. What should I dress up as? Um, I'm looking for creativity. Please know I am not a fan of being very scary. So creative, funny, or unique costumes, those are even better. But I can't wait to hear what your thoughts are and what you've come up with. So guys, thank you so much for your participation today. We will be going over this homework when I am back in class on, when, on um, Tuesday. Until then, have a wonderful weekend and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye guys.